Let's see, we're going to adopt uh, the agenda. Any comments? To walk people through, Bill, just for some who 60% uh, of our board, this is their new meeting. If you have any uh, requests uh, to move agenda items around or things, this is the time to do that. Uh, typically, things cannot be added to the agenda unless it is an emergency situation that we were not aware of when the agenda was posted. Chime in, board members. All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to say something and I don't remember what I was going to say. That's all right. Bill, you don't need a motion or anything. Do we you need a motion? Adopt the agenda. No, you don't need it. You just okay. Bill that was the word it. that I was looking for. Thank you, Eric. Yep. Okay. Uh, public? No, it's up to you to just adopt the agenda, Bill. Let's adopt it then. All those in favor? You don't even need to do that. Awesome. You're doing great, Bill. Keep it up. Keep going. Introduction of the incoming board directors. Number C, or actually letter C. Great. We have I Christopher will, uh, Chase, uh, Kathleen uh, Kilkenny, and Lisa Ruggieri. Good. Welcome all. Okay, Bill, uh, if you don't mind, just to, uh, for some record keeping, all three of the uh, new directors, Director Case, Director Kilkenny, and Director Ruggieri, have uh, signed their oath of office. It has been submitted and accepted by the uh, registrar of voters. So for them, there is no turning back now uh, for another four years. Uh, your service is uh, appreciated and thanked in advance. Okay. Anything else? Uh, unless the three of them would like to do a uh, little quick uh, something would be uh, great. We'll uh, volunteer uh, Director Case to go first because it's alphabetical order. All right. Um, hey, uh, glad to be here. Um, it'll be nice to get to know some of you guys that I don't know and just looking forward to serving the community. Uh, I've lived here long enough, so uh, I guess it's time for me to kick in some of my own time. And then uh, next on alphabetical list will be Director Kilkenny. That was exactly what I was gonna say. I've lived here for a long time and I'm excited to be part of the community and give back some more. Yeah. And Director so, um, I guess I'm gonna be the third to say, um, I uh, also <laughs> lived in this area for my whole life. Um, really excited to serve and, and give back to the community. Um, got two young kids in the school system as well. So um, trying to get in as, wherever I can. So happy to be here, happy to work with all of you. Welcome. And as somebody who's had a uh, opportunity to uh, you all and get to know you a little bit in these last, uh, couple months. I uh, thank you again in advance and I certainly look forward to working for with you all and I think that the district is incredibly fortunate to have the three of you uh, willing to play this role. So thank you. Bill, you do have a uh, public comment on this whenever you are ready. I'm ready for public comment then. Okay. Steven, you're on. Hello? Okay. Not well, gonna comment? Well, we can... Uh, Steven, we, can we get, don't hear you. We can get back to him if it works later. Uh, try raising your hand. Okay, I will... Uh, we we'll have another one here. One second. Oh, familiar face and name, anyway. Um, hello, good evening. This is Isabella Perry. Um, I had withdrawal symptoms, so <laughs> I had to log on because, you know, Tuesday evenings would not be the same without, without it. Um, I would like to welcome the three new directors and um, wholeheartedly thank you for um, embracing this new opportunity for you and the challenge at the same time. Uh, we need your brains, we need your 
patience, we need your open-mindedness and diligence in, in conducting district business. I trust that you have the tools that you need because um, I know Eric has been searching very thoroughly for uh, people who would be the right fit and um, I do trust him. So again, thank you for um, for starting this four year long journey, four years long journey, here we go, um, and Godspeed. Thank you, Isabella. We miss you, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isabella. Thank you for your service to the community. Uh, you, can, you can take my chair anytime. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's your turn now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Isabella. Nice to hear from you. Uh, you have another here. One second. Bill? Well, it's a uh, director alumni night, I guess, uh, Bill Hansel, <laughs> and I, I also thought to, to log on and, and uh, you know, wish you all the best. It's been, this is, uh, tonight's would be the fifth anniversary since I had my last meeting um, after <laughs> serving for about nine, I think it was nine years, and uh, it was, you know, all the spectrum of experience that you could imagine <laughs> um, and it was really fulfilling. You know, um, I, I was happy to be a part of all the things that we were able to accomplish. I'm really looking forward to everything that, uh, that you all can do for the community. And I, I'm, uh, I, I just wish you all the best and thank you so much in advance for, for your, your patience and your tolerance and your service um, and everything else. I, I look forward to you all thriving um, for yourselves and for, for the district. So thanks a lot. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. Okay. And then you have one more. Uh, we'll try to uh, Stephen here again. One second. Should we tell Isabel to lower her hand? Uh, I got it. Okay. Hello. This is Steve Nessel. Uh, Steven. Good to uh, meet some of you. Um, when your names came up, uh, er I asked everybody, who are these people? And uh, didn't hear anything bad. But I, actually, I really don't know know anything about you. Well, I, I, I guess, you know, um, now we've got five directors and all of you have um, basically run unopposed. Bill ran his first campaign. I helped him, actually, for his first campaign. Uh, but everybody else has been placed... Um, and it sure would be nice, uh, we've got 6,000 people in the district, and it sure be nice uh, because we didn't have an election to know who you are and you know what, what issues are important to you. It'd be sure nice to get that information out to the community. Um, and one of the first things I'd like to ask of you, or, and you, we can discuss this later on, um, is to have a meeting where, you know, basically you can uh, meet with the community and tell people what you're about and, you know, your vision for the district. Um, I think that works a lot better than being um, uh, a board. And I, apparently a lot of you know each other. Um, I know Chris. I know your dad. I, I met your dad. Um, and I read that I think Kathleen is part of the Water Devils, and, and Chris, you're a coach for the Water Devils. I'm a, I'm a swimmer, not this year, but I'm a swimmer, so I, I like that. And I don't know much about Lisa except that she's got two kids up at Lucas Valley and um, I guess a, a friend of Savon, so that's, that's nice. But, you know, um, there's a lot of things in the community going on and gosh it sure be nice to know you know what you what you guys think about stuff going on in the community I'll that that's all I have for right now I do have um, issues uh, that uh, concerning my you, you probably have heard about me I have no doubt that uh, uh, you probably heard bad things about me that um, but uh, I want to let you know, I live on Quietwood Drive. I love the community. I love the parks. I love the open space. And uh, 
I am just as devoted as probably you are to the, the betterment of the community. And I look forward working with you uh, uh, to a new vision and how we can carry it forward. Uh, so uh, anyhow, I know you guys been lived here all your life, but, but you know, there's 6,000 of us or maybe uh, 5,900 of us that really don't know who you are at all. So we'd like to know, know that. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Is that all? That's it. Okay. Let's go on to the consent calendar. With draft minutes and the bills paid. Any discussion? Bill, to be clear, before we move forward, I realize that uh, none of the three uh, recently appointed board directors were at the last meeting. They are certainly uh, allowed and encouraged uh, to vote on the minutes because if they don't, then we can't form a quorum. So uh, there is actually writing on this in some levels about voting on minutes and uh, at the end of the day, you read the minutes, you listen to any feedback that either of the directors who did attend may have, and you can certainly vote accordingly. Thanks, sir. Yep. I'll say I looked through the minutes, and they looked pretty good to me from somebody who was sitting there, if the three board directors who weren't there want to know. Mm -hmm. Any questions on Bill's page? or? Nothing. It's pretty straightforward as far as I'm concerned. Um, any comments from any of the other board members? Comments from the public? One second. So these comments are uh, directed to the new board members. Um, it's, it's really hard to figure out what's going on in the district by reading the minutes. Uh, there's just not enough detail there. But I wanted to let you know that we have, or I have, a full library, video library of meetings available, and I'd be happy to share them with you. Um, so uh, they're up on YouTube. Um, and uh, you, so you can, you know, watch it to your heart's content if you're if you're interested. I hope um, as you move forward that you think fresh. I mean, this is, you guys do represent a, a new vision, a new opportunity. So the past shouldn't be a guide to the future. It should be your your future that you're building. Thank you, uh, Stephen. It, it actually comes up. Quite Do I have often. a motion to approve? Uh, and I'll motion the to approve the consent calendar, commission. which includes the draft um, minutes from the November 10th uh, meeting you know, and the bills. One, we have a lovely and park. Uh, we have it. all this great yeah. open space. Um, and one of the nice things <laughs> about Marinwood Park all those in favor. is that nope, it's so nope, accessible nope, nope, nope. Uh, got to the it, community, uh, it's a roll including call people though. with mobility <laughs> issues. We just started doing and, it that way. Um, just in to March, give you last year. a brief on on this, um, not, we do have some areas funny. of the park that do present <laughs> a laughing. danger to people with uh, mobility impairments. Let's start with Board President Shea. Namely, the uh, Western uh, Quiet Director Wood Case. Drive entrance, uh, Thank which you. is Director on a steep Kilkenny. slope and Aye. could be hazardous Director for Oysterman. elderly Aye. people and coming up Director and down. Director Ruggieri. Um, I you. ask that you look at the park and uh, right chris i know you're cl close to the park i don't know yeah, if we you have probably walk open to school public comment uh, open time for that. items not on yeah, the yeah. agenda so um let me guess you know that area is the, the, you've got a lot of erosion you've got a lot of potential for ahead, just Steven. improving that area of the park and it does represent about half of our open space and i would ask you to uh, think about that as a project, um, and uh, uh, if it's not, it doesn't appear that it's on tonight's agenda. But I would lo love for it to be on a future agenda where we can talk specifically about improvements um, that we can make. 
by the way, and Chris, you're probably aware of this too. I was the guy who uh, instigated the uh, the plaques uh, with the help of your dad uh, along that area. So I I have a great love of of the environment and uh, and of Marinwood Park, and I think uh, we just we could do a lot better with that that section of the park. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. <clears throat> Anybody else, Eric? Nope. Okay, let's move on to district matters. We have an election of board officers for the calendar year 2021. We're electing the board president and vice president. Yes, I apologize first off as I forgot to update the uh, byline here on my staff report. So uh, my apologies. I uh, just take the most recent one and uh, go from there. So I'm not recreating the wheel each time. So uh, the date should be today's date. And this topic on this should say election of board officers, but all the material below is correct. So According to our bylaws, every December, a board president and a board vice president is elected uh, by their colleagues on the board to serve in those roles effective January for the calendar year coming up, in this case, obviously 2021. Um, There's a board-driven decision. As such, there is no staff recommendation that comes along with it. Um, we simply <laughs> need a uh, somebody who is uh, willing and is supported by uh, the rest of the board members for each position. Well, considering cool. that Bill was vice last year, I nominate him to be president this year. You're too kind. <laughs> I think Bill would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Thoughts, Bill? Well, I'm, ha I'm happy to VP for you. I'd be happy to have you as VP. <clears throat> um, or would you like me to press and you can VP? Well, we have to elect everybody, so as soon as the president is elected, I'm guessing we have to elect the vice president, Eric? Yeah, well, you can do it all in one motion. A motion for board member X to be president and board member Y to be vice president. Uh, and then you need a second, and then we can uh, collect any uh, public comment that may exist. Okay. Does so anybody have a motion? I, I move to elect Bill Shea as president and Savon Oyserman as vice president of the 2021 2021 Marinwood Community Services District Board of Directors. Second. <laughs> uh, roll. Never gonna get in here. Who was who was the second? 
Kathleen. Or when I, 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 well, it was Jinx. We both both seconded at the same I, time. I, yeah, I uh, second we'll him, him, but he hadn't finished yet. Okay, well, we'll give a motion. To, we'll give the motion to Chris and the second to Lisa on this. Uh, and then, uh, Kathleen can have for, it. For the record, so that <laughs> Tiffany has it correct. That's fine. That's what I heard on the audio anyway. So I wrote down a good guess. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, are we ready to vote? No. Uh, oh, we're not. Oh, I'm sorry. I need Peppa Comic. Yeah. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, Bill. Should we open it to public comment? Okay, one second. Steven. <laughs> Thank you, Steven. Thank you. Isabel raised her hand too. Yeah, I got her. Isabella. Yes. Um, Thank you so much for taking on this uh, leadership role. I think it will be perfect for the new board members to kind of get their feet warm and uh, ready for the next year. Uh, but I think for now it will be um, reassuring and, and smoothing the transition to, to have you two in the, in the driver's seat. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Isabella. Is that all, Isabella? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, roll. Uh, is there's that no, I'm sorry, Bill. Go ahead. Is that it? It's that is it. Public comment. Okay. Yeah. Can I have the roll, please? Yes, you may. Board President Shea. I. Director Case. Absolutely yes. Director Kilkenny. Yes. Director Oyserman. Yes. And Director Ruggieri. Yes. Thank you. All right, on to the district manager's report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, I won't read all of this word for word, just a quick uh, bit on or, you know, what I've been doing. Um, I want to let everybody know that I did uh, have a chance uh, within the last uh, week or two to meet with each of the uh, incoming directors individually, uh, and we did meet in person. We went over several things. Much of it uh, was kind of generic to their roles, was provided by organizations such as uh, the California Special District Alliances, you know, that spoke specifically to the roles of a board director in a special district. However, we also uh, provided some overview of the Brown Act uh, and uh, is focusing on what were pertinent for, for directors. Um, and uh, with that, uh, went over Rosenberg's rules, uh, our administrative calendar, so that they have an idea of what comes up at what different times of years, and then a, a larger overview of district finances that included the budget um, for this fiscal year, some other general information, and then uh, had a little bit of time for Q&A uh, with each of them. So I thank them for their time, for coming in to meet with me. I hope it was beneficial for each of them. It uh, certainly helped me, and the goal was uh, that uh, tonight everybody feels a little bit more uh, prepared and uh, and or dare I say comfortable in their rooms. Uh, quick update on the park maintenance facility. Um, as you have probably noticed, the demolition is just about complete. Um, by the end of this week, I am expecting that the park modular office will no longer be there as well. So the entire site will be cleared and emptied. Um, which is great. In terms of moving forward, um, last week we finally received uh, communication from the county that authorized our third party plan review check request. Uh, and with that, we uh, had entered into, signed off on the agreement with the third party plan reviewer, and those plans have been shipped off to them. So they will, uh, they give us a 10 day turnaround for initial review at which point uh, we can look at their comments, make adjustments uh, that they uh, recommend as necessary, and then submit them back to them. They will review any changes and turn that around within five days. We went through a third party plan check system a, because it's completely allowable. They're actually a, a pre-approved vendor listed by the county. It is cheaper. The turnaround time is significantly greater. 
Oscar. Uh, yeah. in terms of speed. Uh, for those of you who have been following this, uh, the county is incredibly backlogged and short-staffed and everything going through their planning and building departments is taking the maximum amount of time possible. Um, with that said, that process is underway. When we get that, we will be able to finalize the bid sets. We still have a goal of hopefully being able to issue an RFP by the end of this calendar year, allowing a minimum of 30 days for review response and uh, site visits of prospective bidders. Um, and then from there, we'll move into the actual bidding process. This is all strictly regimented by uh, government code. Um, bids are received sealed. They're opened uh, on a set and announced date, um, which has not been determined yet, but that will most likely happen via, usually those happen like in an in-person setting. Um, I imagine because now we can't really do in-person settings that we will arrange that uh, through some level of a virtual meeting like this, and we'll make sure to notice that to the public and it'll be included in the bid set uh, as well. Um, so we are able finally we're moving forward qualified bids all bids will be examined by staff and by the project architect to make sure that they meet all qualifications and have fully responded to the bids qualified bids as well as staff recommendations will be presented at the next possible board meeting for board review and potential approval of the uh, recommend qualified bidder at which point we enter into an agreement with them and by spring we are hopefully uh, breaking ground we've submitted the, and received permitting from the county and we are uh, this project is off and running so that is where that stands other items of note um, just on myself personally have been in regular meetings uh, with the marine emergency radio authority I have actually another one coming up tomorrow um, as well as meetings with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority Operations Committee. I am the appointed representative for Marin Wood on both of those. Uh, the Operations Committee is strictly made up of staff of participating agencies as opposed to their board of directors, which is made up of uh, elected officials from governing bodies of each uh, a participating agency. Bill Shea currently serves as our representative on the Wildfire Prevention Board of Directors. Um, and then uh, finally, and I assume that uh, Chief White will probably discuss this a little bit more in his report, um, but we've been working with the San Rafael Fire Department's vegetation management uh, staff regarding vegetation management projects, uh, both that have already been planned and are ongoing as well as planning and looking at future efforts uh, for short the rainy season. In fact, I have a meeting with one of them tomorrow to examine some of the goat raising areas as we're trying to get contracts put into place uh, to be able to bring goats back out uh, prior to next fire season. Next year, uh, at specific areas of property that we have, um, so that uh, you got to get those things booked quick because goats have become a really popular endeavor and they want to put it out for bid and if you don't get on their schedule you don't get the goats and they're uh, very cost effective as well as highly efficient uh, at what they are intended to do and clearing out tall grass um, and then again um, they have been doing some work for us through the wildfire prevention funding um, director Ruggieri might have noticed it in Lucas Valley, um, they've been helping clear a lot of dead brush along what is known as the Creekside Trail. And that's been with use of the AmeriCorps team. So we'll get, I'm sure, more into detail with that on Chief White's uh, report, but they've been doing a tremendous job and uh, I just am thankful for all of that. So uh, outside of the other obvious and things that have been happening, uh, if there's any questions on any of this or any other matter from the board, I'm happy to field that. So we're, we're moving right along. The, I noticed last weekend, I thought the uh, modular would be gone by last weekend. I did too. Uh, that had a little bit of a delay on the contractor's part. He was actually hoping to find a way to be able to move it as opposed to, yeah, that's what it was my reaction. Uh, but uh, he has told me that one way or another, uh, by the end of this week, it will be gone. Okay. So uh, I 
narrative. I'm holding him to that and letting him know. And he recognizes that the weather's changing and he needs, it needs, the site needs to get ready and done before rainy season. And our staff have some work that they want to be able to do out there uh, prior to uh, bringing in others too. So cool. he is, he's aware and yeah, he knows it, it, it needs to go. So uh, he's, yeah, he's, he's actually been really good to work with and very responsive and I'm appreciative of him. Doing the work awesome. Hey, okay. Eric, just ballparking, when, when uh, how long is the project supposed to take once they actually break ground? Yeah, something I mean, of this magnitude. You know, I, I, it's hard to say, but I would gauge, you know, you're looking at probably six months. Our goal is to be able to have it completed and operational prior to uh, next rainy season. So you're looking at next fall, um, you know, probably right around this time of year. Um, it all depends on how quickly we can get things turned around. The big wild card is going to be on the permitting. Um, so we're trying to get all of that. Good. Once we get through these plan checks, we can then submit for the actual building permit. That's going to be a process. So we can't do anything until there. But I mean, if we can break ground, you know, by March, uh, we feel pretty confident we can have this thing done and get everything moved and set up uh, ideally uh, sometime by the end of summer, uh, next fall, or uh, end of next fall. Excellent, thank you. Yep. Of course, it's been a project fraught with delays, Chris, so don't hold me to it. Uh, every construction project is. Oh boy. Not everyone. Well, welcome to Public Works, too. Uh, any other questions from any other directors? Uh, just, and any topic, <clears throat> really. Well, I just, I guess we can talk about it later, but um, reappointing people or appointing new people to the fire department. Yes, the fire commission and the parks and rec. Okay. That'll come up next month. And I'm happy to talk about that okay. uh, when we talk about future agenda items. Uh, okay. But in, in accordance with our bylaws, that happens in January. That happens in January. Okay, sorry about that. Jump okay. in the gun. No problem. Anything else? Public comment? Yeah, one second, please. Isabella. Hello, my goal for this evening is to give Steve a run for his money on public comment. Uh, uh, but seriously though, um, I want to say there were two main reasons why it was hard to part with the position of a director. One was the company, both the staff and the fellow board members. And the second reason was the fact that the um, maintenance facility building has not been completed as I wished it would be when I left my office. Therefore, I urge you to please do whatever you can to uh, keep the ball rolling on this project and ensure that our uh, park uh, workers can enjoy as safe of a workplace as our firefighters do. Um, they can get their jobs done in a, again, safe, dry, dry and, and um, space that's been designed for what they do. Um, it's been overdue. As you all know, um, their workplace has been an eyesore for all the residents of our community. And it's it's about time that things change, and they they do deserve um, the space. Um, they've been so dedicated to our district and have uh, really um, stood by through thick and thin, and uh, downpours and droughts, and uh, uh, survived. Um, you know, transition from a park director, uh, Gary and then um, Shane's leadership and Luke's leader leadership. So there has been a lot of change. They've remained with us dedicated. And um, again, I, I wish I could see, or uh, I will definitely be there when, uh, when the project is completed, but please, please, please um, do whatever you can to um, help the project along. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. And one second. Steven? Yes. Um, so uh, I guess um, I'm glad Isabella had a chance to speak first. Um, I guess this is to inform 
new directors. I don't know if you guys have ever been at a CSD meeting. You probably have, and I didn't recognize you there. But um, but anyhow, this uh, this facility has been controversial. Um, the neighbors in Quietwood um, uh, felt that it was oversized. Uh, we got a, 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 li a, a petition of 200 uh, park users to uh, ask the board to have a public meeting. We were refused flat out. Um, this is a facility that we, we, we all knew needed to be replaced, but um, this is much larger than the original vision of, of, uh, of the Park and Rec Commission. Um, it's, it's really quite extravagant, uh, even uh, for Marin County's uh, terms. The uh, probably the most egregious thing of all, and I would hope that the board would take a different view of this, is we have no idea how much uh, the CSD is planning to spend on this. We ask on a monthly basis, well, what what's the budget? Where where what's the range you're looking at? And the response is always, it we don't know. We don't have the bids yada, 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 like they hadn't thought about how to pay for this large project. Well, this large project um, is going to be a financial stretch for us. We've got another very large capital improvement with the pool. And as a pool member and, you know, user, I really want that pool to be in good shape, as I'm, I know that you guys do. Um, I, I just think that this is one area that um, there needs to be accountability uh, from our Eric and uh, and the contractors and and uh, Bill Hansel, uh, who I guess is pro I don't know if he's still on the on the line, but um, we really we have been put in the dark, and it's really quite quite actually shocking that that uh, we have committed uh, to this large project and uh, above the the objections of the neighbors and no budget being discussed. I know Isabella knows. I know Bill knows. Eric knows. I don't know if you guys know. Maybe Savan knows too. But um, this is not right. You're, you're, you guys are spending... Uh, public funds on this, and uh, so I, you you do have to you know engage the public. The other th big thing, and one of the my key areas that I objected to the project as, in addition to the size of the project, was the simple fact that um, it's going to be very difficult to turn around vehicles without driving all the way into the field, um, past the maintenance area. Now. They, the Bill Hansel says he's figured it out. It's never been explained in, in detail. We've looked at the size of the truck, the trailer, or the, the space needed to turn around. We just can't figure out how this is going to work, uh, the plan that has been submitted. So we don't want this whole area to look junky as it has in the past. We want something beautiful. And quite frankly, we want our park because really it's a the park that that we love not the the buildings or the trucks everything is is in service of the park so um anyhow that's that's all i have to say i know eric is doing his best with his um uh you know to do do a good job but uh i i do think uh thank you steven and that's is that it, Eric? No more. Uh, yep, that's it. Okay, on to fire department matters. Uh, review of the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting of December first, two thousand and twenty. Can I make a comment? Please do. Eric, do you mind if I bring up the radios? No. Okay, so the um. I am losing words today. So when we had talked 
right after the big fires, we had talked about different ways of alerting the community to possible dangers of fire and needing to evacuate. And um, the chair, uh, Steve Fark, had really liked um, various options and we kind of looked into them and but we held the fire commission kind of held off on doing any more research because um, the bill was passed so that we had some extra funding within Marin to help coordinate as a county to do fire safety and now we have these it's NOAA right yes the NOAA radios that um, they are doing a test in Marin County with, and each district has gotten some radios and they basically sit in your home on, uh, and they'll only push out alerts if you are in dire need of hearing them. The fire commission, um, each of them have agreed to have one of those radios in their home and to answer questions if need be. And I just wanted to bring it up and see if any of the board members wanted to do it too, if we should do it as a board or if this is not something you guys are all interested in. Savon, do they currently have the radios in their possession? The, the fire commissioners do, yes. Eric dropped them off and Eric has ones that each of us could have too. Okay. And currently, even though I'm on the fire commission, I didn't get one just because we're assuming that one of you three are going to be on that commission along with the parks and rec so you guys can get to know the district a little bit more i'll probably show up at the fire commission meetings because i like getting all the details um but yeah i just wanted to put that out there for something for everybody to think about maybe possibly if this is something that we have to pass as a motion that it can be on the next agenda or if this is just a discussion item that we can all agree to or disagree to so if I give you a little bit more background on this, um, this is through the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority in cooperation with Fire Safe Marin. Um, these radios are just another means of emergency alert, kind of like Alert Marin. And Chief, please chime in any point you would like here as well, um, or Nixel. Um, however, they're a little bit more targeted and they're also tied in with the Marin County Emergency Operations Center. Um, so that way, you know, we have a dedicated frequency and they can pinpoint more of areas and it, uh, you know, gives you fire uh, warnings, evacuation warnings, things along that line. So what the uh, authority is doing is they're conducting a pilot study. They've put a thousand radios out. I do have some here still. Each of the uh, commissioners has agreed to participate in the pilot study, uh, which the Fire Safe Marin was really happy about. Uh, and each jurisdiction, it's up to them to uh, place the radio. We got very limited at 15, I think, in total. Uh, but if there are board members who would like to participate, that is certainly acceptable. I'm sure they would like knowing that uh, uh, members of the governing body are doing it. And then whatever is left over, <laughs> out an announcement uh, via social media and just kind of distribute on more of a first come first serve basis we got again very few because they were distributed based on population percentages and we're one of the smaller agencies participating in terms of total population um, these are small radios this is the entire take box. an opportunity to jump in real quick yeah please chief yeah, I was just going to say also for, uh, well, first let me introduce myself. I'm Darren White. I'm the fire chief for San Rafael Marinwood. And it's my pleasure to welcome the new members, uh, uh, Mr. Case, Ms. Kilkenny, and Mrs. Ruggieri. Thank you for joining the, the board of directors and serving Marinwood. We really appreciate your time, energy, and commitment to doing this for the next four or more years. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> absolutely. But <laughs> um, to piggyback on what District Manager Drykosen st stated, it's it's also important to share with you if you decide to take one of these radios that they just won't be going off all night throughout the night, you know, periodically. Um, the NOAA is going to be responsible about, very responsible about ensuring that they push information only when it's, you know, direly necessary to do so. Um, they don't want to get to a point where people feel like they're not going to really value the radios and start turning them off. Um, because they're receiving just advisories or other caution information. They really want to push out orders and actual um, warnings that you need to heed that you 
for whatever reason, um, may not be able to receive due to PSPS or um, down cellular towers or you know any other compromised situation. So these are a great redundancy, and I really think they're worth exploring and trying to see just how effective they will be to keeping the community safe and, and forewarned when something may take place. Yeah, they'll only go off on that one night that your kids decide to sleep through the night. <laughs> Can I ask a few questions? Does it only do your, so it's only your area? So even though it's a Marin County based trial, will we only be notified about Marinwood and maybe like Terra Linda or Ignacio, or will we, we be notified about all of Marin County? My understanding is that you should be notified about something that's an imminent danger to your specific area. It should be okay. targeted so that your area or your zone receives notification, not just the entire county or adjacent counties. So and does only that include blackouts, like if the there's a blackout because of high winds, fire danger, whatever, does that come across? I, I don't I'm know that a blackout really qualifies as part of the criteria they want to announce. I think they're looking again at information that's more. Um, Centric to conditions, uh, fire danger, flooding, other things that have something to do that the National Oceanographic Atmospheric Association actually um, studies and, and predicts and monitors closely. I can't really say that a PSPS situation would be something they'll push forward. That's a good okay. question. And is it one way? Like, will they in my conversations? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Is it one way? It's not like Alexa where uh, I can talk, correct? No, I don't think this is two-way communication. I think this okay. is- Okay. You can't talk shit then, to it, no. <laughs> oh, damn it. Um, so I don't mind stepping up and taking one as a board member then. I'm in too, it sounds good to me. Yeah, I'll take one too. Eric, I talked it over with Mike and he's willing, so. Bill, you're the odd man out. I'm always peer in pressure. Yeah. Peer pressure. Sorry. <laughs> I I'll have to check with the uh, the leader of the house. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I was nice. I checked. Good. I will. Uh, I'll get something out to all you guys as well as some information that came from uh, MWPA and Fire Safe Marin. Thank you, Chief, for. Uh, a much better explanation of what's happening than I could provide. Oh, All no, right, no, you then. did great. You mm -hmm. did great. Uh, back to the minutes. Any questions or comments on the minutes? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Chief report, right? Nope. Take uh, comments from oh. the public? Correct. Uh, you do not have any on the fire minutes, Bill. On to the chief, chief's report, Chief White. Okay, well, we're gonna jump straight into the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority information. Um, I, I've been excited, I, I shared the same excitement with the commission last week about the fact that we have three teams currently working in um, Marinwood and San Rafael combined. Uh, the One of the teams leaves on the 22nd of this month, and I have to tell you, one of the bigger concerns we have, though, is that a couple of individuals came down with feverish conditions, and we had to isolate and quarantine um, with significant concerns that maybe they had the COVID and may have uh, affected other team members. We've since, with the original team that had the first problem, confirmed that those individuals came back negative. So that's great. They're back up and resuming the work. However, the most recent team that we received, the third team, which is unprecedented to have this many teams of volunteers doing work, one of those individuals actually did test positive last week. And as such, um, they're gonna quarantine and isolate and discontinue work up until probably sometime right around the first part of January. So they're gonna return back to Sacramento. Um, and in essence, just, kind of wind things down pretty quickly here based on the fact that that individual tested um, positive. We had one or two members from our department who had been in close proximity, possibly around the time that individual may have been contagious, but everyone's been masked, everyone's been socially distanced, so we feel confident 
but those individuals aren't going to be exposed. And in fact, one of the members' tests came back today already, and it was negative. So we're really um, encouraged by that and hopeful for the individual for a full recovery, um, especially considering these are volunteers coming to help you know, address community risk reduction. And so um, that was something that really got our attention over the past few days. And as you can imagine, I've been dealing with something comparable with San Rafael Fire Department suppression members as well. So we've had to place some individuals in, in isolation and quarantine based on that. I spoke with the one individual thus far this year who actually tested positive. He's doing well. He's going to be coming down off of quarantine and probably back at work sometime next week. And so um, just as a testament to how things have been escalating in Marin County and um, in other parts of California, if not the rest of the country, this now has actually surged to a point where it's affecting our members who are far closer to us. And it's not just the public we serve anymore. It's now starting to circulate among some of the um, employees from time to time. So uh, we're going to continue to do our due diligence. We've given guidance. Uh, we've provided information to those individuals who may have been exposed and to those who may have actually tested positive to ensure that they have some good um, understanding about what to do moving forward. But I just wanted to start that and share that information. Um, but I'm gonna move into more specifically the work that's been done recently. And I'm really uh, thrilled to see some of the progress. And I, th I think if you get a chance to look at the photos, you'll get a chance to see some of the before and after. But again, those three crews have done phenomenal work um, in areas ranging from San Rafael's Dominican neighborhood to Contempo Marin, which is just on the other side of the sheriff's office in Los Gamos heading towards um, the bay. And I think uh, Eric spoke to this earlier about Creekside Path and Lucas Valley Road and the crews doing a lot of work there. Um, in addition, there were some questions about some long-standing challenges with some properties on Miller Creek Drive. <laughs> happy to report based on the efforts of uh, Sean, uh, rule, excuse me, who's our vegetation management inspection supervisor, uh, and some of the other individuals who have been working diligently over the years to convince a particular property owner that the, the immense amounts of juniper and other uh, vegetation needed to be addressed and finally got compliance from that individual. So if you, if you take a look and get a, a glimpse at page three, it shows some of the before, tremendous amounts that were encroaching upon the street, the sidewalk, uh, other neighbor's property. And it's just, it's unbelievable. I, I, I'm curious as to how many years that had been growing unchecked. Um, but when you look at the before photos and then you look at the page four after photos, it's quite a change, quite a, a different reality, a, a property that people may not recognize because it's been hidden behind so much juniper over time. So, um, and that's a the, the, the two crews were working out clear um, some of that work these were the two crews that arrived before the third crew on December 1st um, so it's just my hats off to them for the, the amount of time energy and effort they put into doing this but doing this responsibly and in an aesthetic manner that people can appreciate that it just wasn't butchered it was actually done with some thought and um, a, a good degree of thoroughness and so uh, I think uh Eric may have mentioned at the commission meeting that there were a few vehicles that were revealed after you cut back all of this juniper. And so I, I saw a couple of other pictures and literally there are about three or four cars on the property that you couldn't have seen from the street that once the, uh, the juniper was removed and the other vegetation was removed, you could see. So this is just one of many prop or one of a few properties rather that we know have been historically a bit of a challenge to get cooperation and compliance with, but um, we feel confident that um, we'll continue to be able to address situations like this moving forward. I think um, property owners recognize that, you know, the days of resisting or the days of worrying about, you know, the appearance of their vegetation on their property comes second to community safety, their own safety as well as their neighbors. And so because of that, uh, I applaud Sean Rule again and, and um, Chief Roach before me who had worked to, to try to convince and put uh, fire safety on the minds of some of the property owners. But however, unsuccessfully, I'm gonna believe that all of those efforts led to our current success in getting it finally done. So I uh, just wanted to touch on that. Uh, we did have a couple of emergency incidents. 
that uh, I spoke to uh, at the commission meeting. One was on uh, Contempo Marin. There was a, a mobile home that caught fire. We, they were fortunate that it didn't catch any of the other exposures, um, but the occupants were able to get out unharmed. And um, for the most part, there was an issue with a smoke detector, a non-working smoke detector and carbon monoxide alarms. So this could have really been a different outcome depending on the time of fire and the fact that, you know, someone could have been asleep and not heard or even known that there was a fire. So I, I just encourage everyone to move to the 10 year lithium battery smoke detectors and carbon monoxide alarms just to ensure that, that you're, um, you're safe and you're working with the best and current um, systems that we have to help our, our own safety. So um, Departing, this is really a tough thing for me to have to acknowledge and I'm sure um, Eric will, will attest to this as well. Sean Rule, who I just spoke about having worked so you know diligently over the past couple of years to help draw down risk in our community and do an excellent job interacting with the community members and with contractors and providing um, documentation and information I need to provide to council, to provide to you as a board and um, the fire commissions and others. Unfortunately, Eric has an aspiration to become a structural firefighter. And he's now decided that he's uh, gonna take the opportunity to go to Chabot College in Hayward starting in January. And so he's resigning at the end of the month. Um, it's gonna be a great loss for us. If I was able to, to hire him quickly into Marin Water San Rafael to keep him, I would. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't have ALS or advanced life support training at this point, so that kind of, negates it. I'm almost ready to go and give a last ditch effort to let him know that, you know, I'll put him through school if he signs with San Rafael and then maybe, you know, sticks around that way. But I don't know if that's going to work. I think he's ready to, to really move on and try some new things. But we really appreciate all of his service and wish him well. And, and uh, it's going to be hard to fill Sean's shoes. We lost Matt Urias um, maybe about three months ago to becoming an arborist and working for a tree company in San Francisco. And to have Sean Lee right behind it, it's it's uh, it's going to be a challenge for us from the historical knowledge perspective. But I think what we have that we've hired recently that's really going to be helpful to us is we have vegetation management inspection staff who have a, a variety of backgrounds and ex experience that are going to suit us well. Some of them come from the environmental background. Others come from a, um, a suppression background or a combination thereof. And even still others who come with a, a certain perspective on ecology that, that I couldn't begin to speak to and touch. And so with that, we've got some individuals I think that are gonna be able to, to fill in admirably. They won't serve initially as supervisor, but they're coming on board as vegetation management specialists. And I'm hopeful that they'll be able to learn and navigate some of the, uh, the unfamiliar sooner than later. And one of the individuals that we hired was actually a defensible space temporary uh, seasonal inspection employee and he's, uh, he's the folks I'm really leaning on in path for this, and I'm hoping that he'll be our next version of Sean Rule, if not better, but time will tell. And then last but not least, uh, I do have the data for last month, and uh, those of you who've been tenured members of the board will, will see that there's a change from five minutes and 58 seconds to now five minutes and 40 seconds for our average total response times. And so those numbers have gone down, which is very encouraging. There's a running joke because over the last several months, um, the data has always revealed almost the same exact numbers. It's almost like we're robots responding to the same turnout and total response time. But this month, the numbers have dropped um, roughly by almost 18 or 20 seconds. And so that's a testament to our crews getting out quickly. And that's one of the things that I really try to emphasize when I speak to our members is that our turnout time is going to really be the most important thing that affects our total response time. When we hear the emergency and we get out the door quickly, we're actually making sure we provide the best possible service because we haven't wasted precious time getting on the apparatus and leaving the station and heading to the emergency. So uh, I think that message is obviously sinking in. Uh, I I'm fairly sure, almost 100% sure actually, that my predecessor, Chief Gray, was probably a very big proponent of the very same thing. And so the message is gonna be something that I continue to carry forward. They're probably going to get tired of hearing it from me, but I'm going to continue to say it until I'm no longer fire chief. So they should be prepared to enjoy that for some years to come. <laughs> so. Okay, you just gave me like a little heart attack. 
Oh no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I have no. a, can I ask a question really quick? Absolutely. I, the quickest is the most important, but do you have a time that you, is it five minutes flat? Is it four and a half minutes? Like what's the, at, I know our average time, what's a general average time? Well, the way things work um, is you have what's called a call processing time, which some agencies are really good at processing the call and getting it to the crew and getting it done within a minute or less. You have a average turnout or turnout time, which can be anywhere from 90 seconds to two minutes. If you're, if you're meeting those benchmarks, you're actually getting out the door pretty quickly because you got the call quickly, you got the information. And when I say you got the call, sometimes it's an actual phone call and sometimes it's just a transmission that comes across via, via computer and a dispatch printout. Either way, as long as you're getting out the door within that three minute window, your travel time now averages somewhere between four and five minutes. And that will give you roughly the ideal average time as being about somewhere closer to seven minutes for a call. That goes contrary, though, to how much time it really takes to respond to a cardiac emergency, as an example, where the seconds are literally precious. And so what we see is very fortunate here in Marinwood, where our members are their average total response time, which includes the call processing time, the turnout time, the travel time until they get on scene is five minutes and 40 seconds. I've seen that okay. nowhere else. So okay. I, just, I say that's a testament to you know, the crews and their understanding and their ability to get to where they need to go quickly and their district familiarization because you have to know where you're going to get there in a, a very short period of time. Yeah, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Chief, uh, as Sean's eighth grade English and history teacher, when you see him next, please tell him uh, I said hello and congratulations. I certainly will. <laughs> You're not aging yourself there at all. Uh, I'm, I am ancient. <laughs> I turned to some other background. I, I have to echo Chief on his uh, accommodations of John Rule. He's, he's been instrumental in a lot of things that we have done uh, most especially since we formed the chief services uh, chief officer services agreement in 2018 with Santa Fe um, and the implementation of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority he's really helped us take a much more strategic and thoughtful look at wildfire prevention amongst our open space areas uh, has been working with us on putting together more formal plans. I also have to give a uh, shout out to the emergency manager, Quinn Gardner, who is uh, quite possibly the hardest working person I think I've ever met. Um, she is phenomenal. But uh, Sean has a long, you know, to uh, Chris's point, uh, history here in Marinwood. Uh, you know, he worked at the pool with Luke years ago. He's gone through our volunteer fire uh, department program. He is an exceptional young man. Uh, I echo the chief's sentiments in that it is very bittersweet. I am sorry to see him go. Uh, I believe this is the best opportunity, and I fully support him in that. He is an exceptional young man who's going to do really good that. things. I agree. <laughs> And that concludes my report. Uh, any comments from the public? One second. Stephen. Yeah, um, Chief, I, I don't know if you know anything about this, but, you know, PG&E has been really busy right around the corner for me um, at... Uh, uh, Las Galinas and M Miller Creek and I'm just wondering do you have and I I remember well what happened down um, uh, a few years ago with PG&E and uh, the longer they stay there the more concerns I have that it's a big issue do you have any knowledge of what's going on there and whether it um, is a safety concern that the community should be aware of there's been no safety concerns communicated to me or my staff that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not sure I could begin to, to tell you. I'd be speculating to say whether or not they were doing some undergrounding or whether they were replacing some wiring or putting in some of the, um, I'm trying to recall what these, these devices are that actually segment when they have to do a power shutdown so they can scale down the power shutdown to a, 
a smaller grid. And so this could be part of their, their actual PSPS work um, in, in anticipation of future needs or, or uh, a desire to actually improve um, their ability to reduce the impact on our community. And so I, I would, I'd be speculating, but I wouldn't say just because they're there for an extended period of a time that that's reason for concern. In fact, I'd kind of look at it just the opposite. I, I might view it as I'm glad they're here putting in a lot of work and I'd welcome them to stay and put in any additional work. Whatever work they feel they need to do is probably a good thing at this point. Thank you, Stephen. And thank you, Chief White. You're welcome. The date of the next fire commission meeting is January 5th. 2021 as opposed to 2000 yeah. you, know, you know thursday was a hard day for me bill i don't know what the, <laughs> last, last week did not go as planned <laughs> all right it was a classic 2020 thursday oh. come on yeah <laughs> there we go uh let's go on to the draft minutes of the park and rec commission meeting any comments Is there anything that we need to know from the meeting, yeah, Eric? It was, it was the shortest meeting I've ever attended. Okay. Any comments from anybody else? From the public? Yeah, one second. Yeah. Uh, there was about a 15 minute conversation on uh, the park, uh, the uh, putting in a ramp at the West uh, Quietwood Walk Street. Um, and uh, I, I can never uh, pronounce your last name, uh, brought it up and it was discussed. Um, and I, th I think they were, I, I actually expected it to be on tonight's agenda. Um, it is an issue of concern um and just especially during the construction because this area as uh those of us who live in the the uh neighborhood know this is a major walking path a major way to get to school uh exercise and everything else and um i don't know if there are any provisions to get around the construction site you know, once they get going, I certainly hope that there is, but in in particular, if there isn't, we need to make sure that uh, that access point is a safe uh, entrance. It's, it really is a hazard the way it is. Not for us young folks, but anybody who has a problem on their feet, uh, when that area gets wet, it gets slippery, and we don't want people falling down there and uh, causing, getting them hurt and the district to get sued. So um, I just bring that to your attention. It was an important part of the meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Stephen. Can I, can I ask, um, what, I'm reading this in the minutes. It says Western entrance. So we're, we're not talking about the entrance onto Miller Creek Road. We're talking about the one that's just shy of the existing modular building. It would be actually just to the east of the modular building, that cut in right there. Right. Correct. Yeah, there's okay. two different walking paths from Quietwood. The right. commission uh, will be taking this up at a future commission meeting okay. for further discussion. It's been discussed at uh, several prior commission meetings as well. So it uh, was brought back to their attention, and they have uh, – uh, director, I'm sorry, Commissioner Shawsome asked uh, if we could put this on a future agenda. So their meeting, uh, it'll be on a future PNR commission meeting. Okay, great. Thank you. You're very and welcome. I have a question. Um, during construction, will the path to walk from Miller Creek down along the backside of the houses even be open? I sincerely doubt it. So that would be that. the only access in and out on that far end of the path? On that far end, yes. Or there's another pathway, uh, as you're aware, uh, a block or so farther down the road. And then there's the other entrance on Las Colinas as well. Okay. Any 
Anything else? Uh, park and rec <clears throat> recreation and park maintenance activity report. Hello, everyone. Yay. Oh. Oh. Welcome. Welcome. You just hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, while we're uh, all gushing about Sean Rule, I'll just throw my two uh, cents in. And I did uh, hire Sean for his first job. Uh, my first year working at Marinewood, and he was a pool attendant for us and later a lifeguard. So, for what that's worth, I've known him a long time. Uh, he literally can't he, leave, right? And he has the same <laughs> cell phone number. Uh, I was trying to text him about the um, the work they're doing uh, on the number he listed on his email, and I saw an earlier conversation from like uh, six years ago that I had with him when when he was on my staff. So I thought that was funny. Um, but yeah, uh, it's nice to see all of you, and uh, and and thanks for um, for being here. Um, just to talk about recreation for a minute uh, to give you guys a sense of what's going on in the rec department. Um, we normally this time of year would be uh, gearing up for uh, winter fest or it would have already been happening maybe later this week. And um, our big holiday open house event obviously cannot happen under the current circumstances. So um, trying to do some other things instead. And one of the things that staff came up with was a uh, letters to Santa um, program where we have a mailbox outside the community center that um, uh, is uh, that's taking letters straight to the North Pole, and we've got a, a nice uh, light light up display there. And kids in the in the community are welcome are encouraged to come and drop off their letters to Santa. And if they get them in by December seventeenth, uh, they will receive a response. Um, I won't go into detail about how that works because that's uh, above my pay grade, but. Um, uh, that's going on right now, so that's been a fun thing, and we've been receiving lots of uh, letters on behalf of Santa every uh, every day, and, and that's been a, a great thing so far. Um, and uh, we're also getting ready for our winter break camp that'll be taking place the last two weeks of this month, um, during uh, while school is closed for the for the holiday. And um, so Robin's got her uh, staff getting geared up for that and, and getting all the preparations and supplies. Uh, so we're looking forward to um, to running our winter break camp this year. Uh, which fortunately has not had to be canceled due to the current uh, health order. So we are moving forward with that. Um, we're also doing a lot of summer planning, uh, spring and summer planning. We, we typically put out our spring, summer Marinwood review, our, our catalog of spring and summer programs. That usually comes out in late January. Um, and we end up opening up registration for camps and swim lessons and all of that on uh, early or mid February. And so uh, we usually are finalizing a lot of our information right now, um, but due to the current circumstances and, and all the unknowns with what we'll be able to offer and what that will look like and, and what the um, what our numbers will be, we're, we're going to push back a little bit on that and, and wait for more information. So um, staff are hard at work right now doing a lot of research, working with other agencies. Um, they regularly attend uh, calls and meetings with the, the county health health department uh, with their um, parks and rec uh, programs to just see what's what's coming on the pike and, and try to get an idea of what other people are able to offer and working on a plan a plan b plan c plan d of um, what we might be able to do this next spring uh, for the pool um, what kind of programs we might be able to offer uh, and as well as for our camps and classes uh, through the spring and summer just so that when we finally do know um, what we'll be able to do we'll already have done a lot of the leg work and be able to hit the ground running which um, which we were able to do this last summer thankfully so it's hard to plan for multiple different scenarios, maybe none of which will play out like we think they will, but, um, but the staff are really hard at work doing a lot of research and doing a lot of prep and, um, and working on that while they also manage and continue to market the programs that are currently going on. So um, that's what uh, currently up to with on the rec side of things. Um, hey, on the Luke, part, oh, yes. Luke, before you move on, if I could, you, just because you have a note in it, and I know we sent out something, and while well, the chief is still here, too, just to be clear that uh, unfortunately uh, the stay at home order applies to Santa Claus as well, and he Thank will you, not man. be uh, traveling the neighborhood this coming weekend with the fire department and our volunteer firefighters as he has for unfortunately many 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 years so it's another uh, another wonderful tradition that uh, the current health situation is is depriving us of and we had a lot of thoughtful talk about it and ways maybe we could still try to do something and uh, the wise decision at the end of the day was unfortunately it's that uh, he's not going to be making it down this year so uh, 
help uh, if anybody asks anybody if that's happening this weekend it is not we did put something out on next door as well as our facebook and social media but uh unfortunately santa is trying to stay healthy and stay safe uh, in preparation for the big day should we put something <laughs> up by the drop-offs too right because those drop-offs were associated with santa's uh, well, I think those are going away soon, too. Okay. Where does that go away? You mean for the toy drive? Yeah. Oh, for the toy drive. Oh, yeah, yeah. We could put up signs. Right, because no you you, you, we would give the toys for the toy drive to Santa, and Santa would make sure. Yeah, we can, put, uh, we can put something up, Savon. Thank you. Okay. I'm just thinking of another avenue for people who are not on Facebook and stuff. That's good. Thanks for uh, covering that, Eric. I'm, yeah, uh, sorry. No, no. It's, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, Yes, yeah, so moving over to the uh, parks maintenance uh, side of things. The staff have been hard at work the last couple months um, working on we've been sort of piece at a time getting our temporary work site uh, up and running to where the staff will be working while, uh, while they've been working so far the last um, few weeks during the demolition and, and also uh, during the construction of the new parks maintenance facility. And I'm sure you've all seen it, um, but it's that uh, fenced in area at the, at the far end of the park. And um, so we did some more work on that. Uh, finally got electricity on November 23rd. So uh, these cold mornings, I think the staff uh, said that this morning that we were running at about 30, it was like 36 degrees when they came in. Um, we finally have heat and light. So um, that's been, been a, a very helpful thing for them. Uh, we're operating out of two large cargo containers and uh, with all the equipment and tools and some of the, um, well, not, not the vehicles in there, but we have everything uh, housed in there and it's been getting organized and up and running and finally installed some emergency eyewash and first aid uh, situations this week. And um, staff have been hard work just making that space usable so they can continue to um, provide the, the maintenance and do the work that they need to do um, during these uh, next months while they have no official facilities. So um, I appreciate the staff working hard on, on doing that and, and things are, um, I think we're gonna be able to, it's gonna be functional, uh, not ideal, but definitely functional while we uh, wait for the facility to, to be built. So we've been working hard on that. I've had a couple of irrigation uh, leaks, more irrigation leaks um, in, the, in the park this last month. That staff have identified and uh, were able to repair. They're getting very uh, quick at the repairs now. They've been kind of popping up um, a lot this year, and um, I've just it seems that our our system was installed in the '90s. So that was the last time we did a, a full irrigation installation, and the pipes are just getting old. Um, the ground is settling. There's a lot of gopher um, activity, a lot of tree roots coming in, and we've just been seeing um, just cracks uh, uh, happening a lot more frequently this year than we've seen in, in many, many years. So uh, that's taken up a lot of time, but but they've gotten it down to a, a pretty good technique and keeping a lot of um, parts on, on hand so we can get those um, quickly and, and get water back on as, as needed. So um, that's something that we've been dealing with. Um, and the open space has been a, an ongoing issue during the shutdown with a lot of increased activity on the trails and a lot of kids uh, being stuck at home without a lot of things to do, a lot no sports to play and no activities. There's been a lot of um, fun being had in the open space, whether that be bike ramps being built um, or rope swings being hung in various places. And we've had to have um, just continue to monitor the open space to to keep an eye out for those things and eliminate hazards and um, issues that are unsafe for the for the trails. And we found some more uh, bike jumps out of Blackstone Canyon this last um, month that we've been taken down and um, as well as some furniture out in the open space that we have staff removed. So uh, we always keep an eye on that. Um, staff continue to try to make their rounds to the different areas, but we also rely heavily on uh, hikers and, and community members to alert us when there's um, either a hazard, whether it's a tree that's fallen down or, or someone's been dumping or something like that. And we did remove a couple um, uh, down trees or cut them up off the trails this last uh, this last month. So, um, and staff continue to, to prepare for the hopefully uh, future rains that, that we may hopefully get someday. Um, just checking drains and culverts and V ditches to, to make sure things are clear and that we won't get big clogs um, as well as we've been making our way down the creek, just checking for uh, hazards that might cause damming or, um, or or other issues with the with the flow and erosion. So um, that's the main uh, thing that the staff have been on this last month. Um, and I also posted just kind of our weekly daily maintenance for for those of you that would not know uh, what the staff do in the absence of of major repairs and, and projects. 
Um, if, if anyone has any questions, please um, let me know. I have a question. Please. Uh, who maintains or who controls the median on Miller Creek? And I'm guessing uh, I can relate to from Las Colinas all the way to Lucas Valley. Um, so those medians, I believe, are um, owned by the county uh, as public works, but um, we have uh, taken on the maintenance of those, and those are that area has the was one of the areas that's been contracted out to to the land design uh, landscaping company that we use for some of our areas. So uh, land design. Uh, maintains those medians. Um, there's different degrees of how m much maintenance they do. Um, the ones in front of the community center get much more, much more manicured, and then the ones uh, farther down towards Las Colinas are left pretty wild, and they're just supposed to be eliminating uh, hazards, low-hanging trees, and keeping things. Um, yeah, well, it was brought up to me that uh, between Peachstone and Las Colinas, the median, evidently Comcast put a new pole in, and they they cut. I guess the, a tree that was right by the pole and just left everything. Um, we did remove a tree branch this last week. Was it, is it something that's there right now that you, I, you know what? It was just brought to my attention on Monday. Okay. Well, we'll definitely take, uh, keep an eye out for that and take okay. a look at that. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. I'll double check with the people that live across the street. Hey, hey Luke. Yeah. Uh, First off, thank you for everything that you and, and your staff do. I mean, obviously, you and I have worked together in, in many different ways over the years, and I'm super impressed and, and uh, so glad that you're now leading that crew. Um, I'm curious, with the, with the median, um, who determines, like, how, how that is um, – I'm looking for the right word here um, – maybe how, it, how it's managed or – um, I'm thinking of there's a crosswalk, Bill, I thought you were going to say the same thing. There's a crosswalk. It's on Miller Creek Road. It connects the, the walk through from, you know, it comes all the way up from Quietwood. Right. And it yeah. goes all the way through the neighborhood. There's it's a got cones up right now. Right. Yeah. I noticed yeah. those cones. Um, and that like, as somebody who drives that pretty frequently, I was just curious how that's managed because it does seem like we could do something different there to make that crossing safer. I'm not saying it's your job or your staff's and, Eric, I don't know if this is a better question for you, but since Bill brought up the median, I thought I'd just jump on. No, it's actually, um, so that particular crosswalk, and this is something that's come up before in terms of visibility. Um, and I think actually, um, yeah, your dad actually brought something up a couple of years ago about some of the bushes uh, out in front of, of your house. But um, yeah, so uh, like I said, we've taken on just dealing with that because it wasn't being dealt with um, by, you know, the county, they haven't touched it. And if we wanted to look nice we it was kind of it's sort of been taken on by by marinewood csd um and eric correct me if i'm misstating anything here but um we actually i just have those uh those exact particular crawl question that has cones those aren't our cones we didn't put those out of a resident did that to try to you know i think keep people keep slowing down there and, and watching out there are definitely some shrubs and bushes that have grown up to the point where they um if you had a child walking through there and about to cross it would be it would be difficult to see them even in you know broad daylight so um i talked to staff about um chopping down some of those uh shrubs this week actually it's on our on our list this oh, week cool. to to go and see what, what we can do to open up the visibility as far as the responsibility i mean you know we've been dealing with it for a long time now and um, that's definitely something that, that the parks department can um you know deal with if someone has a question or an issue or concern very cool thank you very much yeah and are you doing are you doing the whole path or just miller creek because even on quiet wood um a lot of the kids get to quiet wood and they love to ride continuously into the woods um, or into the back side of the park. Um, and there's some shrub right there that when I drive home, I slow down. But if they were to come out from the park and not stop, there's a huge shrub right there. So when you say you're going to look at the whole path, is it from from the park all the way to, is it Opal Stone, Peach Stone, Peach Stone? No. Peach stone. It goes no, all no, way uh, the last stone. one. Yeah, it, uh, it actually runs to through Opal to Opal Stone. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to maintain the whole, not just the Miller Creek area, but the whole path? 
Well, the area in question is the, that particular crosswalk is one that we've identified um, as, uh, as something that we could definitely open up visibility. I'll definitely check the other ones. We, I know the one on Pinewood going towards the Panhandle. There's, um, I know there's a, an area there that, uh, that could be, I think, cut back as well. But yeah, we, we do maintain those, walk, those walkways. So we'll take a look at, at the crosswalks and, and just see what can be done to clean those up or at least cut some things back um, to help that out. But yeah, we'll definitely, I'll make that part of our... Uh, I just think with the with the kids being stuck on computers all day, they're out riding more. At least I'm trying to get mine out to ride more. Um, Absolutely. And so we just want to keep them as safe as possible. Yeah, no, that's good. And we, um, yeah, so we, we do maintain those walkways all the way through. And then, you know, as far as visibility, that's definitely something we can we can go through and just make sure things are um, not being super obstructed as people are going through there. But you said specifically the the side going towards the Panhandle, or the other direction from Miller Creek um, on those paths. I only care about Quietwood. Okay, okay, so that, that area's on our radar. I'm just kidding. Sure. No, I care about the whole thing, but I only notice Quietwood. <laughs> um, no, yeah, and that's that that spots on. So radar everything radar else well. is for Chris. The other thing too on that path. I thought when they did the handicap ramps on Quietwood that they were going to go all the way across and do Miller Creek on that path. They've never done that. So that's not handicap accessible except when you get to Pinewood and then down to Quietwood. And they, oh, and the they, did, it on Peach, they did it on Peachstone. And I'm not, and I believe they did it on the Opalstone Street also. But as far as crossing Miller Creek, they've never done anything as far as uh, handicap accessibility. Yeah, and that's definitely, that would be the, I think it's Public Works. Um, yeah, I, I was surprised that they should drop the ball on that one. Well, and I tell you, Bill, I, I, I speculate, but I think part of that is because that literally does cross through that median. Um, and so they don't, you know, which is in the middle of the roadway. And if they're going to put it on one side of the road, they would also have to put them into those medians. Uh, and the road is a little bit more narrow there. I don't know about bump outs. I know where you're talking about, say, on Peach Stone, is it, mm -hmm. doesn't, is it necessarily a bump out like what they have created on some of the other areas on Miller Creek Road? Uh, um, but it's uh, it, a lot of it has to do with because that median is there. So you have to kind of step up. So the whole thing isn't truly access that's not a accessible crosswalk right, uh, right my understanding and past communications with the county because those are roadway and uh improvements that's actually dpw with marin county uh, department of public works <laughs> marin county's jurisdiction is uh you know on some of these when they redid them they actually shortened the median but they would have to open up that entire median and make that you know and pave that over and make everything right. there uh uh, ADA compliant to, to put them on either side there. Yeah, because that little path through the median is probably less than three feet. Well, that's exactly right. And I'm sure that uh, I, don't, I don't know why they didn't do that, but it, it would be they can't just put them on the sidewalks there without also addressing them in the median. Okay. Yeah. It just surprised me. Thank you. Anybody else? Public comment. One second, please. Stephen. Yes. Um, is there any reason why we can't get some rustic uh, uh, stairs in the West uh, Quiet Wood Walk Street area? You know, I, I think there's been a issue with communication. I, I I fault myself. I've talked about a ramp and what have you. And really, all I'm I'm talking about is uh, a rustic improvement to level off the area and to provide some sort of traction for people to get up this slope. It really is nothing more than uh, pressure treated four by fours um, sunk into the ground uh, at levels uh, comparable to a stairway. Um, maybe a little bit of gravel fill. It really is not a big deal at all. And if the, so it doesn't require lots and lots of discussion. This is a really small job. Um, if 
the park staff is unwilling to do it or you can't convene, I'm sure we can convene some neighbors who uh, see the importance of this project and we can get this done on a Saturday. Is there any reason why we can't get that done without a, a lot a lot of unnecessary discussion? Eric, isn't that on the Parks and Rec Commission for it, it's to be it's going to be discussed at a future meeting by the Park and Rec Commission and, uh, but just to uh, uh, comment on Stephen's last comment, I think the uh, nature of government work divide, uh, requires lots of unnecessary conversation. Well, uh, uh, let me speak to that because we do, I, I worked uh, with uh, Tom Horn uh, improving the open space and I think that area is considered open space to build trails and really that's what we're talking about are trail improvements. This is not a huge deal. You're going to start construction soon. You've already indicated that it's going to be cut off. So really, we this is an important project to get done rather quickly. And it does. It, we can get it done quickly if there's the will. If you want to talk about it and you think that you need to talk about it, let's get it done and then you can talk about it later and how you can improve it. But but safety first is is key. Wouldn't you agree? I'll just uh, point out that this was, yeah, this did come up in several meetings um, over the years. And the, the last time there was, uh, you know, uh, the, the door was closed on that or um, was it was determined that we would continue to rake the path um, was what was deemed um, the, the necessary maintenance of that area um, and have not been directed to do any sort of um, structure improvement as of now. So it's not a structure um, improvement though. That's what I'm saying. It but, really uh, is yeah, just so putting in some four by fours. Commission have that, um, you know, someone that comes up on those, on those uh, agendas, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Well, uh, if someone gets hurt, there's going to be a lawsuit. Okay. And I, I really think, especially because of the way that this whole project is, is being done at the maintenance facility, the very least that you can do for the community, that you, the hundreds of people that, that use that path every day, is to make sure it's safe for people to use. I don't, I see this as, I, I'm actually surprised that I have to bring this up. I don't want to bring it up. I just want to get it done. And I don't know why, you know, why it's a big deal, why you have to make a big deal out of it. I, I don't have anything more to say about it. Thank you, Stephen. Anybody else? No. Awesome. Luke, thank you. Thank you. And the date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is January 26th, 2020. You know what? One. <laughs> you got the board meeting one right. Okay. Give, me, give the guy a little break from that. <laughs> uh, okay. On to item I. Board member items of interest. Requests for future agenda items. Anybody? I, I think the only thing I would bring up is and i think it's already on the pnr commission is there that loop is very frequently used and if we're cutting that loop off i i do think we should be thinking about how people can access the i'm referring to the to the obviously to the park loop that seems like it's going to end at that quiet wood section um, i'm not suggesting what we should do about it i should probably go out and look at it myself um, yeah, let's go later we we do we do want yeah, there you go um but i think we do want to um, look at that and see what the possibilities are. Um, because as soon as we cut that off, um, I don't think we want to be cutting off that section of the park because there's a, there are a lot of people that walk through there. Yeah. Being that I stare at that from my house every single day. I would say just also an update on the pool and where we had some erosion going on just making sure that with the new rains and all that that everything's okay are you talking about behind the pool like the the um pump the pump house and everything there's actually luke do you want to talk about this 
no, we can bring it up. Yeah, there was just yeah, we did have a an, some erosion on the um, backside Maybe. of the 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 yeah the top pool that um yeah we had some uh, we lost a little bit of land. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we can have to talk about that next time. <laughs> baby size at the baby pool, which makes more than a baby size problem. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. If there's nothing further, then we can move on to J, which is a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. Are there are no, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I got it. I followed you. Is that not right? No, no, no. You're good. Sorry. Okay, uh, good. I, I, was, I was lost there for a second. But. I, and now you are found. The, the Advil's wearing <laughs> off. You're, you're, you're pretty much, my friend, pretty much. In 2021. Yep, I got that <laughs> right. I told you. January 12, 2021. And, uh, then I need a roll call. No, 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 no. You just stay. Uh, oh, we didn't do that here? What's that? We've done this before, no? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, the ad bill. Just stop talking to Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Make this easy. Chris, I, Lisa, and have this. We got this. Are we ready? Come on, Tiff. Board President Shea. Aye. Director Case. Aye. Director Kilkenny. Aye. Director Oysterman. Aye. Director Ruggieri. Aye. Thanks. Thank you all. A great Yay. first meeting. Hey, happy holidays, everybody. Be Merry safe, Christmas. be well, be and uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, happy we'll be around holidays. if you need happy holidays. And happy holidays. Thank you, everybody. everybody. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Bye, Chief. Great to meet Bye. all of you. Bye. Bye. Night.